the new Defender 50 by Snow Peak, which is a, advertised as a rubber ball shooting CO2 pistol. But it will shoot 50 cal paintballs as well. So really, it's a uh, paintball gun. These have not long been out in the UK. They've only been out about three weeks or so, out for release. And uh, the average £99 each, so they're no, not too expensive. It's a six shot cylinder, uh, CO2 in the grip. Yeah, it's a sub six foot pound. So it's supposedly five and a half foot pounds. I don't know. I've not shot it yet to chronograph it, but uh, I'll do that at a later date. The weather's a bit cold outside, so I'll chronograph it when the weather's a bit warmer. So what I also add is a Umarex HDR 50 cal paintball gun. Now this one is in fact the 11 dual version. There's two versions available in the UK. Uh, 7.5 dual, that would be under the six foot pound. And the uh, 11 dual one. Now these are, I've not chronographed it, but eight, nine foot pound. But because it's a paintball gun and you, it just fires frangible ammunition, then you can own one of these in the UK unrestricted with uh, no laws and no one bothering you. As long as you shoot frangible rounds out of that, which are 50 caliber paintballs. Exactly the same, six shot. So what I want to do is show people some of the differences between the HDR, which is, this has been out ages. There's loads and loads and loads of YouTube reviews on this. People do all sorts of crazy things with them and uh, suit the power up to silly levels where you'll get, it's not really worth it to dodge it because you'll get hardly any shots out of CO2 capsule. So anyway, that's down to the individual, what they want it for. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's it. The Umarex HDR, been out for years. Yeah. And the Snow Peak. Now, the Snow Peak Defender 50, I'll tell you the differences between this and the Umarex, and there's some good points. There is some uh, positive points that you don't get with the Umarex. Now, the Umarex HDR 50 is more expensive. It averages another 20 or 30 pounds from the paintball shops than this one, which is 99 pounds. Both these pistols are six shot. Both use the cylinder that drops out from the side, so they both load pretty much the same. Where the HDR, I mean this was developed originally for home defence, which obviously is a grey area here in the UK. But uh, so for quickness to load it, you bang the bottom of this and that pierces a spring loaded. Once the CO2 capsule's in, you can leave it in and then all you've got to do is bang it or like that, bang it, and you're good to go. You pierce the capsule, and then you are ready to fire. Most CO2 pistols, your BB pistols, whatever, they've, all, they've usually got locking nuts or Allen key wrenches at the bottom, so you have to manually screw and tighten them. So it's the same with the Snow Peak one. That's the only bad thing compared to the HDR, is the Snow Peak one hasn't got the bang the base, bang, 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 fire, yeah? But it's got a big, knurled, plastic, easy to twist locking nut here that pierces, that pierces the uh, CO2 capsule. So you can just tighten it up quite a bit, as you would with most other CO2 pistols. So it's quite tight. And then all you've got to do, give it a quick turn, and then it'll be uh, good to fire. So it's not that much of a, a drastic... Uh, uh, thing between this and the HDR because it's going to take a split second just to twist the base of that ready for some quick firing. Yeah, okay, okay. The difference in weight is there's not a lot, there's not a lot in it in weight, not a lot in it. They're both uh, very similar looking, yeah, apart from this is more traditional revolver looking. This is more because of the square, the square trigger guard there. It's more, you know, in the streamlined, the straight grip on it. It's more like a futuristic looking than the HDR traditional uh, revolver looks. I quite like it. It's quite nice. The grip's straight. The grip's probably not as 
comfy as the uh, the contoured grip on the HDR. There's a bit there's a bit stiffing on the HDR. Traditional revolver feel, and it's quite comfy. This is a bit straight like a broom angle really, but it serves its purpose. It's still got some straight stippling on the grip, so it's still quite comfy. It's uh, yeah, so yeah, it's not bad. I can't I can't really fault it too much. So this, even though it's cheaper than the HDR, has got some plus points over the actual HDR. So the plus points are a few of the plus points on the Snow Peak. I like it because it's got an ambidextrous magazine release. Yeah, there's a spring-loaded slide, and it's on both sides of the pistol, and you don't have to stick your fingers under anything. You can just put your finger and thumb on it and slide it forwards and backwards, and that works on both sides. Whereas the HDR pistol has just got that spring-loaded catch that drops the mag magazine out, and that is on the left-hand side of the gun, so it gets operated from one side. Not an issue, not an issue, it's easy enough to use, but I just like that this, you've got it on both sides. Right, so it's got... Fibre optic front orange sight, which is really good. You don't get that on the HDR50. Nice long fibre optic, and it's red or orange. Yeah, looks orange to me. So it looks orange to me, but yeah. So yeah, it's quite bright, which is really good. I like that. I like fibre optic sights. There's no reason they're not expensive, so there's no reason that the HDR comes or add it. But okay, you may not even need sights on a paintball pistol because they're not very accurate, but you know, still, still nice to have. So the trigger on this on the Defender 50, it's a silver silver metal trigger. Trigger, it's weird shape on this, and it's got a bit. It's got a safety catch that's built in. There's a push button switch on the trigger at the top. Push across. Yeah, push button. So on the trigger, it's a very strange looking trigger on the on the Snow Peak Defender. Very strange looking. Uh, yeah, but uh, so it, it serves its purpose. It does the job. It's got a safety catch that's built into it. There's a little button at the top of the trigger. You press it. I'm not a person when I do a lot of shooting, but. I don't like safety catches, I never have to have a pain in the arse on some things. So, it's got the safety catch there, if you wanted to use a safety catch, yeah. Whereas on the HDR50, it's very much like a Glock pistol where it's incorporated into the uh, actual trigger. So it's got the, sec the secondary trigger. So, so you can't just pull the out the edge of the trigger. You can put your finger on the trigger all the way to fire the pistol. So next different thing with this is the barrel length. It's about an inch and a half. I'm not measuring or weighing things. I'm not in, into that much detail. You can do all this stuff for yourself, but the barrel length on the Snow Peak, which is a good thing, is maybe an inch and a half longer than on the HDR. It's got slightly longer barrel. Now the pistols are very similar in size and weight but the Defender 50 has got the longer barrel which you would think would give 10-20 feet second more uh, velocity in theory. So uh, yeah the magazine shape now this is a weird one because the magazines are the completely different shape the magazine on the uh, on this Defender 50, get it out. Right, it's like it's not round. Yeah, that is, that isn't round. It's the same sort of design as on the uh, HDR. Does the same job, but if you look at the the HDR, it's round. It's got a round magazine. Put the two together. Bear with me a minute. See, one's like. Hexagon shape, the other one is round. But the really weird thing is that uh, both 50 cal, they, the Snow Peak will actually take the round HDR 
Pistols magazine and, and it fits. But the Snow Peaks hexagonal one doesn't fit, won't go in, in the HDR, which is really strange. It's all to do with the bit there, the metal bit that uh, revolves the cylinder around with the grooves on it. Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all to do because this is a different size. But it's very strange how that's the uh, Defender 50. There's the uh, HDR, but I can actually, I can actually put the round one from the HDR in the Snow Peak, and it lines up and cycles. That is weird. That's really strange. That is going to work on one and not work on another. So if you've got an HDR and a snow peak, then you can use your HDR mags in your snow peak. But you can't use the snow peak ones in the HDR. So once the once these are charged with CO2, the Defender 50 is exactly the same. You've got a metal pin on the back that pops out to show it's under pressure. And if you want to dent to your CO2 ca capsule, then you would press it in with something. Probably not your finger, but you press it in with the head of the screwdriver or, or car keys, whatever you've got on you. And you can empty the CO2 capsule safely before you uh, put the gun away. It's never a good idea to leave any uh, CO2 capsules in any of these. Paintball guns, air guns, air pistols, whatever. Also remember when you've got any CO2 guns. I was put up by CO2 guns for a long while, Scholarship. I mean, I've had CO2 pistols for years, BB guns, but, you know, when they're not used for a while or you do not lubricate the seals properly, they become dry and brittle and they just, you'll get it out of the cupboard one day and it won't function. So I think seals in some of these newer guns are a lot better and more longer lasting, but still get yourself some good uh, CO2 silicon oil specific, specifically for the job from your uh, gun shop, paintball, gun shop, whatever, put one drop on the neck of the, on top of the CO2 capsule, every time you put a new CO2 capsule in, just to lubricate that seal, because that's the big bugbear I have with the uh, CO2 weapons. Even though I'm getting more, I'm getting more fond of them now, and I'm getting more, because I can see, I can see, if, if you say if you've got a CO2 rifle, obviously, depending on temperature, uh, how many shots you get, how powerful it is, yeah, we all know the drawbacks of CO2. But you've got, say, 40 shots in the pistol, just in that there, you could, you could buy hundreds of these and save them. If you've got no diving equipment, no charging equipment or nothing, these are good to go and will keep forever until you need them. So that's the good thing about using CO2 capsules. Okay, okay, so which one of these do I like the best? Wow, that is the question because they've both got plus and minus points. So I like the HDR for the traditional revolver looks. I like the uh, HDR because of the quick bang you're in by piercing the capsule. Yeah, so that was really probably the biggest selling point to me was you just what that down, you're good to go. So, I like the style on of it. Yeah, it's nice, nice. The sights are a bit, uh, hmm, not as nice to look down as uh, the sights on the Defender. So, which one do I like best? This is more futuristic. It's got a square trigger, it's got that very strange looking metal trigger there. Uh, don't know. I suppose that's why I bought both. Because I don't know which I like better. I like them both. They've both got pluses and minus points. So anyway, I'm going to take this outside with some uh, rubber balls and uh, test fire it and have a few shots with it.
Oh dear. I was a bit naive. I didn't think they'd uh, probably penetrate that uh, washing up ball because it was a brand new one. I thought it would just catch the rubber balls, but whoops. It's all over the camera. That was just a rubber ball.